Good morning and happy Sabbath. Welcome to Sabbath School with the Chesapeake Western Branch and Hampton Road Seventh-day Adventist Churches, where we are studying a step in faith. Um, but before we get started, of course, we will open the floor for any testimonies or prayer requests that we may have this morning. So does anyone have any testimonies or prayer requests? Um, I want to say that uh, I was so blessed this week. I had several Bible studies and uh, I was impressed to see how God is bringing people right now to, um, to uh, starving. Uh, and I have a gentleman that he said, uh, I, and this is a, a pastor, a, a Baptist pastor. Um, and I met with another one this week, uh, an evangelical pastor. He said, uh, hey, would you like to study with me the book of Revelation and Daniel? He was the one with the idea. And I'm like, are you serious? It is possible? And he said, I want to share with you about the millennium. And it was beautiful. We, I had the study Bible study with, uh, with one of them on, on Wednesday. And uh, he was amazed. He was very overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit power to see how the book of Revelation is coming to life. And meanwhile, we were starting the connection to all the Bible coming in, my, in his mind. And he was saying, right now it's making sense. Right now it's, and I'm, I'm so blessed. Uh, and I had also several other Bible studies with um, other individuals. And I see that people today, they are starving. They are looking for Jesus. And I invite all of those who are watching us today to open their eyes and their ears to see the need to share Jesus Christ. So we are, we are so happy to see that Jesus Christ is coming soon. And people are looking forward to talk to us. So be willing and be ready to give at any time uh, witness uh, and your, uh, share your testimony with them. Amen to that. Any other testimony? How about prayer requests? I need your prayers. Uh, we are right now in a, in a moment, in a difficult moment. I would say difficult not, but um, I would say in a challenge moment where we do not know exactly what is the next step in our, in our life. Uh, and uh, we need your prayers. We need also wisdom from God. And I know that many of you are praying for us because we see your, the results and we see the fruits of the Holy Spirit that is blessing us. So we need to, I, need, I need your prayers for continuing. Also, there, is a, there are several other families that they need our prayers. Alcora, she, is, she feels uh, better. She's home right now. Uh, tomorrow I'll go and visit yeah. her. Yeah, she's walking and she said that she feels better. Uh, her muscles began to work together because she was mm -hmm. in the bed for many months and she feels better. Uh, we have also Ethel Burton and her son, and also she, she, was, uh, she had a, a, um, um, an accident and she was to the hospital, but was nothing major if I remember well, but uh, we need to keep her in prayer and also the, her family. So there are so many other families that I don't, I don't wanna share the names, but they need our prayers in this difficult time we live. And for the, those who are in the coronavirus, those who are suffering from coronavirus, for our nations, for our nation also, uh, I'm speaking about right now about United States, uh, about all of these tensions and divisions and the police and all of these individuals that we need to come together in harmony, in peace, and in love. For our children. There we go. I saw you were going to say something. <laughs> <laughs> For our children. And I also have a coworker whose nephew was diagnosed with leukemia this week. He's in California. So we can just pray for him. I don't have his name, but her name is Michelle. So for Michelle's nephew, um, she's having a hard time because she's in Virginia and her family's in California. She really wants to be there for them. All right. Can I ask, um, Pastor, can you pray for us yes. for the prayer request and to open this in Sabbath school this morning? Yes, of course. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so happy to stay before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. We have such a comfort, Lord, in your hands and your arms. Lord, we see, we look around us, and we see, Lord, how much suffering in the government, Lord, in the, in the, the politics, Lord, right now, in, in the streets, Lord, going on the streets and looking, Lord, how many tensions people are killed because of many reasons, Lord, and also for the coronavirus individuals, Lord, we, we feel, over, we feel over, overwhelmed and we feel disappointed. We feel, Lord, uh, uh, down. 
Uh, but Lord, in this moment, we know that you are in our hearts. So when we look at you, Lord, we have hope in Jesus Christ's name. We have seen, Lord, and there are many people right now, they are, looking, they are um, in, in uh, problems with health. I'm speaking, Lord, about Michelle and uh, her son, Lord, and, and uh, all the problems. Lord, I'm asking you for the family to strengthen, Lord, them uh, in this moment, to feel the peace in their hearts, to feel, Lord, that they are, you are with them because there is no other God like you, Lord. And we yeah. thank you so much because you have the power and you have the strength. You have everything, Lord, that we need to protect us, Lord, and to show us your way. Lord, we are asking also for our children, for all the children in our churches, Lord. I'm speaking about Chesapeake, Hampton Roads, and Western Branch. Lord, our children, Lord, please bless us to have the, the power and to have the wisdom to know how to, to lead them, Lord, to you. Uh, Lord, we know that you are coming soon. We are so happy for that. Also, we ask, we, and we thank you so much for Alcora, that you are working miraculously in her, in her life. The doctors, Lord, said that she has only two weeks, but right now she has at least two months or three months. So she is walking and she is home back. Uh, Lord, she feels better. So Lord, I'm asking you again to bless her, to strengthen her and to heal her by the Holy Spirit power because we do know that you have the power to heal, Lord. And we, we, we have seen, Lord, so far. Also, Lord, we are asking you for Ethel Burton to bless her, Lord. She has been in an accident and, and guide her, heal her, Lord, completely to recover very well and to be a witness for your glory name. Also for Ursula, Lord, I'm asking you, and also for many other individuals in our church to bless them, Lord, and their families. We thank you so much, Jesus, because you are coming soon. And one day when you are coming, we know that all the problems, the suffering will come to an, uh, to an end. But meanwhile, Lord, we're asking you to bless us. Give us right now wisdom. Give us, Lord, knowledge, understanding upon your word in this study of the Bible. Uh, we thank you so much for taking control of our hearts and minds and for answering to all our prayers. There are many others right now who are watching us, Lord, by internet connection, by this, uh, by this uh, Sabbath school lesson. And I'm asking you, Lord, in, to ask to listen to their prayers, the, the prayer requests they have, each one of them, Lord. And we know that we already have listened to our prayers because we are asking all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you for that prayer, Pastor. So this week we will study, this is, I believe, the last week of our quarter mm -hmm. on witnessing. Oh. It has been a fabulous quarter. Um, I think we've learned quite a bit about witnessing and the different things that we wouldn't have thought were witnessing or how to witness. Um, so this week we're talking about a step in faith. And we'll start with Sunday's lesson, which is Jesus' self-sacrificing love. So let's read a little bit about that. Um, let's read Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Two, five, and 11. Whoever grabs that first can go ahead and read it. Have this mind among yourselves, which is your, sorry, uh, which is your in Christ, uh, just a minute. Have this mind among yourself, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, uh, though he was in the form of God, he did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but, he, but empty himself by taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. Five to seven? Um, to 11. Okay. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore God highly exalted him as bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that all the name of, Je all the name of Jesus, every knee, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God, the Father. Okay, so this part of the lesson talks about the thought process of Jesus. Um, so we mm -hmm. all agree that Jesus is our ultimate example. And you can see in this, 
the humility of Jesus. So how can we take this lesson on humility and make it our own in everyday life? Because I mean, he went from like heavenly being, being with his father in heaven, they created everything we see. And it's when it was glorious. Um, and imagine that we are marveling at the things that are now full of sin. So what it was when they created it. From there to being here on this earth, post sin, knowing that it was not the full glory, yet he was still humble as he walked. How can we make that lesson our own for as we're walking and talking and teaching and witnessing? I think the first one is we don't have to understand that it's, uh, it's, it needs a miracle. It takes a miracle. In other words, we as a human being, every human being at this moment, more or less, are looking for their own comfort, their own behalf. Uh, everything we do, or more or less everything we want to do, is that we should be feel well. Okay, so to come from this bubble, to go in the other section when you know that you will be suffering, you will be dying, uh, you will be uh, experience adversities, you experience pain. That needs that takes a miracle. That needs a miracle. So the first thing is that God has been taking that decision before the sin, before the world was created. Jesus took that decision to come from his the heaven, the place that we want. He came down because he was motivated. So this is the second point. So first one, it was uh, God was the miracle. But for us, we need his miracle to come in our life because we need to self-empty, to, to let ourselves from that position. And the second one is we need the motivation. Why do we need that? You see, I realized in my life that we, have, we human beings, we like to do sacrifices when we are the one to benefit. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. For instance, if you yeah. gain $1 million, okay, how much would you be willing to do for a million of dollars? How much, how much you spend? How much, what, how, how much effort do you spend? How many years, how many days or months uh, you spent on no sleeping or whatever? So people, when they are motivated by money, for instance, or a strong reason, they are doing what? They sacrifice. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when we come for Jesus Christ, because we do, not, we do not accept that God miracle in our hearts, it is difficult for us because we are not motivated by the uh, the blessings, but when we begin to to test from Jesus Christ, this is the Psalm uh, says very very beautiful. Test, okay, test the Lord, uh, and and you'll be blessed. It will be in abundance. So when we do that sec that step, you feel incredible. I experienced in my life. I left from Spain, from my paradise. Okay, I had everything I wanted to, to have. People, they were my friends. They were saying, you are not, you cannot go. You cannot live from this. Okay, it's impossible to live. This is the perfect life. And it was so painful for me to take the decision to leave because I know that I was going in the Amazon River and I was dying because of the perpiranias, anacondas, and bugs, and all of this type of thing that I knew from the television. And I do in that remember, I remember that I, I took a decision, Lord, if you want me to die, here I am. I don't care about my life anymore. And the Lord came in my life and gave me peace. When I first time arrived in the Amazon River, I felt home. I felt well. And every single so problem that, that I was suffering, my body and my, my, my body, my mind was connected to God. And I was so happy. So you see, there is a sacrifice before of us, but we can overcome it only in Jesus Christ. Jesus took that decision by himself to be a sacrifice for us. And what a blessing we have for us today. Amen. Um, you asked about the humility of our world. And um, all, all, I have to, all I have to remember is, what am I? Who am I? You know, yet Jesus Christ came down for me. You know, he came for me. Um, but he didn't leave me where I was. He's, he's working on me. He's working on me to, um, 
get me to be a better person, um, to be more like him. And um, f for me, for the, the reason why the mind of Christ can be in me is because when I look at a person, I see me. Mm -hmm. I see me and I see what I can be without Christ. And, I, and the same way that Christ rescued me is the same way he's asking me to help him to rescue this person, for me to show them the lifeline, that they, there is no need for them to sink. So because um, the relationship with Christ is one in, in which when he, he gives you the good news, when he rescues you and he finds you, it's not something you want to hide and keep to yourself. Mm -hmm. It's something you, you want to let everybody know that there is hope. There is hope. Hold on to this lifeline. So no matter where they are, no matter where they are in life, um, he is waiting for them because he, he found me where I was mm -hmm. and, and rescued me. Mm -hmm. So that's why... It's easy for me to be humble um, towards another person, to let the mind of Christ be in me because I know how much he has done for me to bring me to this point. Mm. And I know that it's, if it wasn't for him, I would be like any other person who is still trying to find their way. And uh, Heather, I wanna thank you so much for this uh, beautiful thought because indeed, when you look at Jesus Christ's sacrifice and what he did, you feel it's impossible not to be humble, not to yeah. be, not to, to have that because he did everything and he was the one to search us in the deepest pit we find, found ourselves. When we have that clear in mind, who, we, who were we, who we were in the past and how we are right now, who we are in this moment because of Jesus Christ, this is the secret all the time to evaluate ourselves not with the neighbor not with the brother from the church but with jesus christ so our relationship has to be evaluated um i had um, several several moments in my life when um i i wanted to i wanted to uh make justice okay or to do justice how do you call it? yeah to do justice and um in that moment i was praying lord Please bless me, give me patience, because I am like Peter before being repented. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm harsh in speaking. And, and I, I said, Lord, I need you to transform me. And in that moment, I felt upon me a, a power, a peace in my heart. And he took all my attention, all my, all my, uh, my, my how do you call it, my plans that I wanted to have it, to, to uh, make justice for me and for others. But in that time, the Lord has took and taken control. And I humbled myself in a way that people came and said, hey, man, this, this took you down and you were so bad in that picture. And I said, if I am the one to be humble and to be, uh, how do you call it, to be lower in the eyes of human beings, being, and Jesus to be lifted up, I won. But this yeah. picture, this picture, it's only when Jesus Christ takes full control of your heart. And I experienced many times, I'm not saying that I'm perfect because every single time I'm coming out, but the Lord is taking control. So humbleness, humility, it's a miracle from Jesus Christ. But only when we evaluate ourselves with what he did, as Heather said, what he did in our lives, we are able to do the same at a lower grade with our fellow, fellow brothers. So to kind of put the both what you both said together, it's the miracle is the, where God took us from and where we are. So we already have the miracle in our lives. And the motivation is what Heather said in looking at what Christ did for us and where we, and looking to see that if it was not for him, we could be where, every, where the person we're witnessing to is right now. Yeah. Just in a nutshell. I know it's beautiful. Yeah. And we need this miracle. Uh, people say, why do I need this miracle? Without this miracle, we don't understand God. We do not, we are not, we cannot love. Love means to be humble yourself. And Jesus Christ 
is the picture. I'm not going theological in this passage. This passage is uh, incredibly, very debated in theology at this moment. It's about the Christ nature, okay? He said he emptied himself and many, in the, many scholars, they go in the realm of saying that he was not God. Okay, he, he gave up to divinity. Uh, some others say that he was God and he just covered with the body, uh, flesh. So I'm speaking about, you know, simple words and not trying to make a, uh, this type of uh, uh, statement theological because people are not going to understand. But um, uh, what is important, this passage speaks about Jesus Christ giving up to his glory to come to be an insect, less than an insect, less than an ant. Yeah. Okay. Imagine this universe, how wide and how, how, how big it is, and only to come to be smaller and smaller than a tick or a bug incredible and and the passage speaks about not only being a human being in the sense of every regular human being he was under the human being lifting up the human beings yeah. he emptied and he became like like the, the door how do you call it when you come on the door uh and you have the the floor you have to wash your feet how do you call it um when, before coming in the, on the house, you have to wash oh, your wipe your feet. Oh, wipe your feet. This is the word in, in human. Mat. Okay, so this is the doormat. Yeah. So this is the door that everybody comes and wash and cleans them. So he is the one to support us. How much we should share love in this difficult moment when justice is required and is asked everywhere. Let's do justice. The justice is love. Those who praise you those who persecuted you and that's a miracle so let's look at the commitment that christ is calling us to make mm -hmm. um, let's read matthew chapter 4 verses 18 through 20 and then we'll also go to matthew 9 9 9 chapter 9 verse 9 so the first one is 4 18 through 20. Mm -hmm. Okay, 4, 18 through 20. Mm -hmm. Yes. And Jesus, walking by the Sea of Galilee, saw two brethren, Simon, called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he said unto them, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And then Matthew 9, 9. Nine nine says, and as Jesus passed forth from thence, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the receipt of custom, and he said unto him, "Follow me." And he arose and followed him. Okay, so when I smile, you all know something. <laughs> um, um, we see that there's a theme here. Jesus went to these men and told them to follow him. These men were at work. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took off, you know, he, after they finished with their day, he told them to follow him. So what happens if, what would you do if you're walking out of your job, you're finishing up for the day, and Jesus stops you in the parking lot or while you're grocery shopping and says, stop everything you're doing in life and come and follow me? What would you do? Because <laughs> this is literally what happened to these men. Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the thing about it, I, I think these men, these men, I don't think, I know these men had heard about Jesus from before because John the Baptist was going about preaching, saying, this is the son of God. He is the Messiah, you know, and, um, no, no, the Lord doesn't give us more than we are able to handle. <laughs> so, I mean, you've heard about Jesus. You've heard about Jesus for a long time now. Yeah. yeah, so knowing me, I don't think he will come and say, follow me, because I may question him a lot. I may be like Nathaniel, you know, I may question a lot, you know, um, where are we going? Do you have insurance? <laughs> you know, um, am I going to have a house? Because, you know, those are the things that he's still, I'm still a work in progress. I want everybody to remember that I'm still a work in progress. 
but those are the things that come to my mind first, mm -hmm. you know. But the Holy Spirit always reminds me that God is the creator. Mm -hmm. He is the great physician, so I don't need insurance. If I'm with him, he is my physician. But um, in remembering all these things, and, you know, we just read the scripture that he is God and he stepped down for us. He stepped down from heaven for us. So I believe when he says those things, mm -hmm. I, I, I will leave. Especially if he comes to work, if he comes to my job, <laughs> I'll gladly leave that job and follow him. <laughs> yeah. I, and, and you know, um, the, the thing about it is God, God understands us because I, I have had kind of more or less an experience like that in my life. Mm -hmm. um, I had to make a choice on whether I'm going to work on Sabbath or whether I'm going to um, tell them I'm not going to work and let the chips fall where it may. Mm -hmm. And I started to worry about the whole, you know, what about insurance if they cut my hours? If my child gets sick, I wouldn't be able to take him to the doctor. And the Holy Spirit did remind me that I serve the God who made us and he is able and he has promised us that if we're faithful to him, he will take care of us. Mm -hmm. So with, I did go to them and tell them I'm not going to work on Sabbath anymore. And there was a, a little discussion, but the end of it was I didn't work on Sabbath anymore. So I think God, is, God works with us and he brings us, through different valleys of the shadow of death so that we, we get stronger. Because as the song says, through it all, if we didn't know what problems are, we wouldn't know that he could solve them. Mm. So he works with us through, through it all. So I think if he comes, to, comes and tell me, come follow me and be fishers of men, mm -hmm. if he comes to me at that point, I am I'm able to, to drop everything and follow him, you know, once they have bathrooms and hot water. <laughs> um, and what, what would you do, Crystal? Um, so how do you, how do you understand, how do you understand the call of God and, and, and from that parking lot, how do you understand it? How do, how do we perceive that, that God is calling us personally? Uh, what what looks like? I don't know if you understand if you understand what, if you understand what I'm trying to say. How how will look like our calling to Jesus Christ right now? How do you perceive it that Jesus Christ is calling us? I think with these men, and I I was kind of jesting Heather about this. She said that they had heard about Jesus, and I was like, well, you have too. I think when you have that relationship with God beforehand, He's not going to come just cold. Sometimes yeah. He will, but. It seems cold to us, but it's not really cold because the Holy Spirit has been working in our lives. That seed was planted before. We just didn't know. Mm -hmm. So when God calls us, we, we can hear his voice. He says, my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. So we all know that it's him. And I think as in the little things we do now, and that's why it's so important to do the little things. When God tells us, talk to this person, mm -hmm. um, buy this person a cup of coffee, go give this person a special word give them something to eat mm -hmm. and we do it. There's a feeling that's not like any other mm. when we do it. And I'm not going to say that yet because it goes into our next question. Um, but I'll start on, stay on the positive side. There's a feeling like no other when we do it. And we know that it was God that told us to do this. So mm. if God was to call us or Christ was to call us and we're in the parking lot and he says, Crystal, do this, there's something that'll happen within us to go, this is it. This is him. This is what I've been preparing for all this time. Mm -hmm. um, because we all have that feeling beforehand. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. So when it happens, we know. When they were fishing, they knew that something was up. But, they knew that yeah. something was happening. Uh -huh. yeah. when, he, when Matthew was sitting there collecting money, some, he didn't feel right cheating someone that day. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so by the time Christ came to him and said, follow me, they're like, oh, this is what that thing was that I was supposed to do today when I woke up. Okay, I got it. So 
while we may think and we may look at these stories and think that it was just cold, they didn't know anything and went, God was working on them and he's working in us right now to know, yes, this is my voice, follow me. Yeah, yeah. and uh, I, wanna, I wanna just put a little bit about the background of that calling and there are many PhDs written on that. And there is one scholar who um, a few years ago, I listened to him, there was in the, in the seminary in Spain, he came from general conference and he said, from the time that Jesus began his ministry to the time that the disciples accepted the call was for a few years. So they knew about Jesus, but they were not following him because he was a crazy guy considered. A rabbi who had no school, okay, who was nobody knew about him, and, and he didn't start to do any miracles. You see what I'm saying? In, in the past, they knew him a little bit. When, when, they, when he called them, uh, they were like, wow, they were overwhelmed. But in the same time, is the Holy Spirit power, which is in theology is called prevenient grace. Uh, that's a huge word. So it's the Holy Spirit working in our lives to help us take decisions. And there is one, if we accept him once, to follow him once, and you have accepted him. Crystal also, Heather, when he called you, come follow me, leaving the world aside, you said, yes, Lord. But there is another call every single day to follow him. So there is a statement, there is a, a beginning of everybody, a radical change. A ra and I remember my journey that I was sharing in the beginning. God asked me to leave everything, my comfort, and to live in the Amazon River to look for unreached tribes. And for me, it was one of the biggest calls. But I fought with God for one year. I didn't give up. I didn't want to, I, I like to have a shower in my home. You know, I, have, I like this, this type of things. And, and everybody needs that. But here's the thing, when God came in my life and I said, I surrender, what, after one year, God did the miracles. If I would have not accepted that call, I would not be here and I would not be happy. And look what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to say that God is calling each one of us. Are you, are you, are you all agree? God is calling yeah. everyone. So there is a big call for everybody to let everything aside and to follow him. Their fishing nets, uh, the groceries also, whatever it looks like. This is a big call that everybody has to accept it, yes or no. Uh, and after that decision, there are several small details every single surrender every single day that we accept him and he is fulfilling his plan with us. But if we're not accepting him in the beginning, there will be no, no following up. And my question also is for you, do you believe that God is calling each one of us? And how is that? I think that no matter where we are in life or what we do, mm -hmm there's certain things that we know just mm -hmm. because we are God's children. The question is whether we choose to accept it or ignore it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so my other question that I had was what happens when you ignore it? And that was what I was kind of alluding to earlier is sometimes we do what God tells us to do. And we get that feeling like, yes, this is what God told me to do. When we ignore what God tells us to do, we also get a feeling and mm -hmm. it's not a good one. Mm -hmm. and the more you do something i say practice makes perfect the more you exercise a muscle the stronger it becomes mm -hmm. the more we ignore the the voice of christ the stronger that becomes as well and so it becomes easier and easier each time um but that doesn't mean that it stops mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that god stops pulling our heartstrings it just means that we get stronger at ignoring it mm -hmm. and so that's on us as a person so when we want to reverse that and come back Christ does not stop talking to us. We just have to exercise that muscle again that's been weakened because we weren't listening to him and say, okay, what do I need to do? It's like starting to walk again. It's like starting riding a bike again. It's like exercising again because we all know during COVID we're not. Um, mm -hmm. But when we start exercising <laughs> again, that it, it's, it takes us a little bit of time to get back to where we were. And it's going to hurt a little bit. It's going to take some changes and take that, that constant, yes, I'm going to do this, going against what we know, mm -hmm. to staying with our faith, 
so yes he is still calling us each and every one and, and i have um for people who think that when jesus calls you wouldn't be able to understand his voice mm -hmm. um i have learned that some well sometimes i have decisions to make um either a or b mm -hmm. and I'm not so sure what God is telling me to do. And I make the decision B instead of A. Mm -hmm. And halfway through the decision B, I, did, I realize it's the wrong decision that I made. But from, from an experience I've had, um, even in making the wrong decision, God was able to work with me and bring me all the way wrong back again to A. Mm -hmm. You know, so... Um, I think he understands us. He understands us and he understands that we're deaf sometimes or sometimes like me, you don't shut up enough to hear him speak um, because I, I talk and talk and talk and talk to him all the time. Um, and sometimes I go the wrong way hmm. and, I, and I say, Lord, I'm going this way. I think this is what you want me to do because I want so and so and so and so. And I'm going, and then I say, oh, this is the wrong way. But he makes a path on another tangent that brings me back to where he originally wanted me. I've, I've seen that so many times in my life, and I've seen that is one reason why I ended up here in this Tidewater area, mm -hmm. going around in a circle and still ending up here. Mm -hmm. you know? So God, God is so merciful. He is so merciful with us that I, I just want to encourage anybody who thinks that I wouldn't be able to understand him, talk to him. He listens, <laughs> step out in faith and tell him, you know, I'm doing this. This is what I think you want me to do. If it's, if it's not close the doors, give me another path. And he, he will, he will, he will, he promised to hear us. So if I understand correctly, what you are saying, all of you, is that God is calling all of us to mission. Mm -hmm. Yes. Why is it so difficult to answer and why is it so difficult to move forward? Because we're selfish. Selfish. Yeah, we're selfish. You yeah. know, we, we, want, um, we want what we want. And I think God, God is trying to work out this selfishness in us so that we look out for others instead of ourselves because he has like a good parent preordained all of us to be saved mm -hmm. and he has he has a place for every single person mm -hmm. and he is so much in love with us that he wants us to tell tell others come come to him because mm -hmm. he wants us mm -hmm. but Sometimes we are comfortable, sometimes we're afraid, sometimes we're shy, sometimes we believe what the devil is whispering in our ears. No, don't talk to them. They're rich. They don't have any time for God. Mm -hmm. Or no, they don't talk to them. You know, they don't believe in Black Lives Matter. Or, you know, the devil will yeah. buy into our insecure, have, have try to get us to buy into our own insecurities. Mm -hmm. cool. And in order not to be uncomfortable sometimes we accept it and we don't accept that call to tell everybody we are afraid we are afraid yeah. and, and because we do not know what is happening likewise with the disciples imagine that all their lives they were knowing only one thing how to fish they had no idea how to live by faith they had no idea how to do that they were only fishing and that was the job but jesus is asking us to give everything up, to let everything aside. I'm not speaking about giving all the money to the church or, you know, to the charities. I'm not speaking about that. I'm speaking about your whole being working for this world, let it aside. Focus right now on something that is the best, which is the kingdom of heaven. And when we have that miracle in our hearts, we are, each one of us, we are called. Some people, they told me, how do you feel? It is, it, you don't have to feel it, okay? You have to listen to the orders. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 and 20 says, go therefore. So you have to listen to the order and move forward. Don't wait a miracle to come or, or lightning or striking something to happen in your life. Just go and Jesus Christ bless you. So you are called, each one of you, each one of us we are called. And I'm so blessed because I answer the call of God, but each one of, each, every single day, 
I still face another calling, another difficulties. And by God's grace, and I hope that all of this come to, to a, a blessing and overcoming because I did take several steps, which I am so blessed. You can do the same. Crystal, you have the word. Let's talk about, I mean, so one of the things we talked about, Heather said one thing that brought me to that, and Pastor also said something too. Um, Christ, God does take us down one road, and if we choose the wrong road, he will detour us. Sometimes he stops us in the middle of the road to bring us back. Also, with the, the disciples, they had their fishermen's nets. They had their tax collector. I mean, he was a, Matthew was a tax collector. Mm -hmm. And those were things that were kind of like, eh, they were gray area, but not completely against God. Mm -hmm. Let's look at someone who was completely against God. And God stopped him in the middle of the road to get his attention mm -hmm. to see what happens in his life. So let's read Acts 9, 3 through 6, and then 13 through 16. Acts 9, 3 to 6? Yes, please. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around him about a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the, goat, the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were open, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight and neither did eat nor drink. What other verse? Okay, so let's talk about that for a moment. So okay. we have Saul who was killing the Christians, just for those who didn't know the background of the story. Yeah. Um, those, anybody who's for Christ, he was killing them. Mm -hmm point blank like there was no great area about it. that's what was happening and imagine he heard the voice of, of christ mm -hmm. so like we said earlier you will hear the voice of christ if he wants you to hear it okay now let's read 13 through 16. then ananias answered lord i have heard of many of this man and how much evil he had done in thy saints at Jerusalem, to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he had authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. And the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, and to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hand on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. So you have this man who was completely against Christians, against Christ, doing everything he can to do what he can to be against that ministry. This happens. What happens for the rest of his life? And what did Christ tell him what was going to happen? What did he tell Ananias was going to happen? His life was changed completely. But um, one of the things that we have to understand is that when Jesus calls, calls everybody. Saul was a criminal. He was doing uh, something that was against God, but without knowing killing God. Um, right now, uh, killing God's people. Right now, we have a lot of individuals in the Muslim world, in uh, Judaism, also in, in Buddhism, in, and also in India. Many, uh, many religions in India are. Uh, what we, we can say that God is calling each one of the individuals and not too many people are listening. There are many people also who reject 
In other words, not all who are called by Jesus Christ, they answer positive to the, to, to the, to the call of God. And we see the action because God has called each one of us and the Holy Spirit is the one. Sometimes he's in, it's an audible uh, um, voice, but sometimes it's not, okay? It, it's through the Bible uh, or through, the, through friends. God is calling each one of us. And Saul has this experience from criminal working against God to have the blessing to be persecuted then by the by his enemies, no, by by the the, the same brothers that he was joining to kill others. Um, but you see this blessing, and the blessing is in, in in answering the call. In other words, this criminal became became the, the one to be the 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 number one apostle for Christ. Why? Because not only he obeyed. He believed Jesus Christ, but also he moved forward. And he said, Lord, what do you want me to do? And that was not only words. How many of you today uh, promise God, for instance, when you are in, in difficulty and struggles or uh, pain, Lord, if you bless me, I will serve you all my life. How many of you? And then what happens? We are going back to our lives. Am I, am I right or wrong? Yeah. Many but times happen. And with me also many times, after we see ourselves on the other side of the bridge, uh, we, we say, oh, that was a joke. We are not doing anymore. But the example of Paul stays for us as a witness that when we take commitment, we believe his promises, and we move forward in faith, God will bless us, and he will make us light of the nations. So let's trust God's promises. Paul, Paul was essentially, Saul, Saul was essentially a, a terrorist. He was a Christian terrorist. But he was zealous and he believed what he was doing was the truth. He didn't believe that, oh, I'm just going to go out and kill some Christians because I don't like Christians. Mm -hmm. He believed he was actually defending his faith. Mm -hmm. But he was wrong. He was wrong and God gave him light and showed him how wrong he was. And when the Lord gave him light, he turned around and he was zealous and he was with the same earnest, earnestness and fervor. He went and he started telling others the truth about Jesus Christ, that he really is the Messiah. And, you know, so it's the same thing when as a Christian, if you're going down a path and the, you realize that what you believe was wrong. You know, you, you were wholehearted in it, but it was wrong. When God gives you light, don't be afraid of the light. If he gives you light and he showed you this is the wrong path, step out on the true path with that same zeal and faith that you had and continue on the correct path. Because um, Paul, Saul, was wrong and he had his eyes open. Mm -hmm. God had to blind him so he could see the truth, to quiet his mind a bit so he could see the truth and get on the correct path. Mm -hmm. It wasn't easy for him because I don't think um, sometimes we, we have these ideas that you know, you're doing the right thing and you, you so believe you're doing the right thing that when you, when you have light shine on the error, you don't automatically say, oh, that was wrong, and you turn right or wrong, and you start to do it. Saul had to sit quietly in the dark for three days mm -hmm. before, he, um, before he sent Ananias to him mm -hmm. and to work on him, on his mind. Because I know the Lord was working on his, his mind and his heart for those three days so that he's a new person after those three days, and Ananias came and baptized him. So when the Lord gives you light, if even if it knocks aside all your preconceived ideas, it's the Lord's light. Embrace the Lord's light. And, and also, Heather, uh, after that decision, uh, Paul uh, goes in Arabia for a theological seminary. It was not English. It goes for <laughs> three years. So he goes in the wilderness. He goes in Arabia. He goes for three years to, 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 to be prepared there for the Lord. When he comes back, the one Bar uh, Barnaba was the one to take him under his wing. 
but he was already three years staying and studying to understand the scripture to study about Jesus Christ. In other words, it was not, it was not all of a sudden speaking about Jesus and the scripture was, was clear for him. No, he took three years in the seminary of God to study the Bible, to be sure about the prophecy and the prophecy came to him in the, the word of God and then he came back with the power. What does this say? Um, the study that the following, the, the Wednesday, if I'm not wrong, speaks about the, um, the love and mm -hmm. action, not a passive. Yes. So, so it's, it's not about only, I believe that God loves me. I believe he has beautiful plans for me. It's an action. You have to go forward and go and take it. it and God will bless you. So Paul stays before us an example that he was called. He believed God's promises and he trusted him. But not only he stood the passive, but he made the movement, the move. And so let's talk about that love on Wednesday. So we talked about how that love with Paul. Let's look at that love also with Peter. Yes. Um, so let's read John 21, 15 through 19. And we're going to look at um, just a quick example of Peter in that. John 21, 15 through 19. Mm -hmm. And... I will read it. Mm -hmm. um, so when they had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto them, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, feed my sheep. He said unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things, and thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, feed my sheep. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, when thou wast young, and thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest, and when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. And spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said unto him, follow me. So why do you think Jesus asked Peter three different times if he loved him? That's a, a very deep question. Um, I think... Uh, the most important in life is to hear yourself. It's an action. When, when, when for instance, he said, I love you, practically uh, he hid himself and he knew what happened in, in the past, how that love was not, was not reality in the past. It like, was selfishness. But right now he gave him more assurance that when he was saying, I love you, I love you, I love you, he realized that indeed he loves Jesus. And there are many scholars at this moment speaking about this type of three type of love of agape, filio. And uh, I, will, I will ask, I will challenge all of those who are listening to read the book of John Peckham, uh, Love, a Canonical Model, where he demolished all of this uh, false belief about the love, different characters of God uh, and agape, love belonging to God. That's not true. All of them belong to God. And John Peckham speaks about the fact that I want you to love me as your brother. I want you to love me as uh, your, your God. I want you to love me as, as all of this type of thing. I want you to love me with all your heart. This is, the, this is why Jesus is using all of these gypsy type of models of love. Because all of them is God, is God's character in all of those. It's not only the level of agape, unselfishness. That, that's wrong understanding and interpretation of the word of agape. So uh, why? Because for me personally, Without love, and love is an action, without loving actively, let me share with you what, what my wife said a few, a few, uh, um, a while ago. Uh, ladies, when you say, for instance, I love you, they want you to move to action, to bring flowers or to do something. Am I right or wrong? For, for you, for instance, only say, I love you from your husband, doesn't do too much if you, if the husband misbehave or, you know, 
he is aggressive or he is, you know, he doesn't do anything to show you love. And my wife brought me this idea. So for uh, some people, love means what? Action, not only words. Okay, so words doesn't work too much. So we, we it's the same with us. We cannot say, Lord, I love you unless we are moving forward. And let's look at that commitment of love because um, the, there's a lot going on in the world right now where we kind of need that love of, of, of God mm -hmm. and we need to show that love. So let's read 1 John 3, 16 through 18. First John 3, 16 through 18. But this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. And we also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. But whoever has this world, uh, God's, and see his brother in need, and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Abide in him? My little children, let us not love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. Mm -hmm. So that is going along right, with, just, uh, right along with what you said. Mm -hmm. So in this world today, where it seems like people are denying Jesus left and right, where they're doing their own thing, they're shutting up their hearts. How can we show this love? And what does this say about our mission as followers of Christ? Um, there is a parable also in the, in the Bible who speaks about um, the uh, uh, father had two sons and he sent the first one to his vineyard and the one said, the first one said what? I'm going father. Oh no, he said, I'm not going, but he goes. And the second one says opposite. I'm going father and he doesn't go. So Jesus is calling each one of us and the people of Israel, they were called by God to go, okay? And they said, we go, we spread the gospel, and what happened with them? Nothing happened. They did not, they didn't do it, any action. But the, the Gentiles, they said what? We are not going, Lord, we cannot, that's impossible. They rejected God, but they did, they did go. So we have to learn this type of lesson of love, uh, of obedience, and action god doesn't doesn't uh, it's not only words we are not only words only to speak we need to move forward and to manifest love to our brothers and the best love to manifest your brothers is to give an encouragement give a kind word uh, to say a kind word to help him whatever you can it's live for others in the moment that we are living for others we increase our love let me say it again. We have like a vessel. The love is like a vessel. God has poured the, in the vessel his love. But if we do not give that vessel, if we do not give it to others, this water will be like a, like a sitting, how do you call it? And it will be spoiled. Okay, the love of God. And then becomes works against you. Like people of Israel, say that all the blessings are only for them. They wanted everything. And what happened with them? God left them, abandoned them. So we need to give that love to others that to have fresh love. And the more we go, the vessel is growing. Okay, the cup is growing in a way that we be able to feed more others. So love is a muscle that has to be educated, but in the same time, it's a muscle that is working for your behalf. When you go to the gym, you are not going only, you know, uh, uh, you go to, and you increase your muscles. If you go there, you know, do exercises and increasing the muscles. Likewise is love. So the more love we share with others, the more love we will get and we will have from Jesus Christ. Um, I like what James 1.21 says. It says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to visit orphans and widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. So um, it tells me that love 
is outward. It's um, doing things for others, not being selfish, not being selfish, because selfishness is the opposite of love. So um, working for others, and not just working for others because um, the Bible says so, it's doing it from your heart because my son, my son told me um, one time I, I used to do something for someone, but the someone wasn't really a nice person. So one day I was complaining to my daughter-in-law and um, she, she left the room and my, my, son, my son was sitting there. And when she left the room, he turned and said to me, why, why do you do it? Why do you do that thing? I says, well, because I can, and it's a nice thing to do because, because of Jesus. And he said, well, well, shut up and don't complain. <laughs> and, and that's the thing. It's your, it's your motivation, you know? Um, and he, he made me think he made that child always makes me think <laughs> he made me think. Why am I doing it? And if I'm doing it for God, then it's for his glory. Yeah. It's not for, for me to feel good. It's for his glory. And because he is glorified, I feel good in turn. Mm -hmm. So that is what love is. You know, I don't do it because of me. I do it because I love him and I want him to be glorified. So like when people say, why did you do that? I don't say, oh, because I had an extra hundred dollars and I felt like doing it. Or I had extra food. Yeah. I said, I, I did it because of what Jesus has done for me. Amen. I said, he gave me extra, so I share it. Amen. You know? Amen. And so in this entire lesson, we've learned a lot, um, especially today. What is our ultimate witness and why are we called to do it? What do, you, what do you mean by ultimate witness in the sense of uh, to whom should we uh, talk with? Should we give? Or, no, like our, our, as in our, um, our job or our duty or our action, mm -hmm. witness as an action. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, first of all, I think it's, it's um, we have to obey the command. Jesus said, go therefore and be a witness for me. So we are God's witnesses, no matter where we go, no matter what problems and challenges we face. Remember that you are an emissary, you are an ambassador for Jesus Christ. And our duty is to share love, no matter what will happen, our duty is to love. And, and here's the thing, many people are afraid, are concerned when they think about, think about loving others, going forward, doing sacrifice. We are so afraid because Satan is putting before us a veil of, of uh, worries, of, of, of concerns, of, of fear. And, and he's touching us directly on the sensitive point we have. Why? Because he wants to discourage us. But when we love Jesus Christ, as Heather said in the beginning, when I look at Jesus Christ, how, how humble he was, that makes me be, that makes me share, hum, be humble, and, and also and, and, and be like Jesus, share love. So when we look at Jesus Christ, my point is, do not look on the problem. Do not look on your journey. Let Jesus take you in his journey, not in your journey. Do not have your, your own pattern. How can I do that? No, just surrender and let God work in your life. Uh, this, is, this is, I think, the, the best for me. And uh, love is an action. So let's love all. Don't, don't be afraid to love others. I think that um, the best witness in my life is my life. Mm -hmm. um, if others could see Jesus Christ lifted up in my life, if they could see my walk with him, I think that's one of the best witnesses and what I could testify to what he has done. Mm -hmm. Because the me before and the me now is a different me. And I hope and I know the me coming will be an even better me in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So it's, I think my life will be a good testimony and Jesus Christ lit it up in it. And that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. You're right. And I think I agree with you, Heather. I think 
in just living everyday life, knowing that we're a witness and everything we do and people are watching without saying things, mm -hmm. um, no matter what we do, how we treat people, people are watching mm -hmm. the things we say, people are watching and they may come to you eons later and go, how do you do that? And that just opens the door. So I think what we do every day yeah. is absolute witness as well. But in the same time, I want you to understand that we don't, we should not focus on us. Oh, I should not do this. I should not do that. When the moment that you are focusing on you, what you should do, what you should not do, uh, you begin to be very stressed. Mm -hmm. You begin to be very, but uh, depressed. Okay, you'll be. Uh, it's 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 over over overwhelming. But when we begin to look on Jesus Christ, and to share Jesus Christ, to be to be in His arms, to have a strong relationship with Him, I think Jesus will give the best the best witness. And even in the, the actions, wrong actions we have, because everybody has wrong action. This week I had a, a, a wrong action. I said, ah, I should have not do this. And I should not say that. Uh, and, and, and I said, Lord, please make that curse into a blessing, okay? Switch it. Make it a blessing. And let me tell you something. God will all the time will make it possible, okay? So it's not focusing what you should do or what should, you should not do but who you are, be who you are in the arms of Jesus Christ. Focus more on relationship with Jesus Christ than your actions. In the moment that you focus more on relationship with Jesus Christ, your actions will be like his actions, his will. You see what I'm saying? Because some people, they are focusing on what should you do, what should, how should I say, how should I speak? It's not about you. Let yourself all in his arms and he will change you. That's his job, not your job. But have in your mind this thought, God has called you to be a witness. And in every situation you say, Lord, what should I do? Please take control of me. How should I behave? Give me power, give me strength. That's your job and thank you. So don't live with stress. It's not that you are acting. You see what I'm saying? It's Jesus who is acting, but you be willing to accept him, to accept his actions, his deeds in your life. And I think that 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 life witness is not necessarily us trying to witness through our lives. Mm -hmm. It's starting our day with Christ. It's Correct. asking, what should I do next? It's listening. It's Correct. responding to those things so that our life becomes a witness, not mm -hmm. that we are making our life a witness. Mm -hmm. So I just want to clarify that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Amen. Okay. Beautiful. All right. So I'd like to thank you all for... Um, opening up for us on the Sabbath school and sharing your testimony, sharing those the lovely things that the Holy Spirit has impressed on your hearts as we wrap up this quarter. Um, and next quarter, we will be studying education, which should be fun. Um, it'll be interesting to see how we, how we study that. So if I can get someone to just close us out in prayer. Yes. Heather, can you close us out? Okay. Yes. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. It's so much love, so much light that you have given to us through your word. And Lord, we praise your holy name for it. And we ask, Lord, that all who hear, even in just passing by, will be blessed from your word, that the Holy Spirit will cause them to think, cause them to ponder their situation and how much you have done for us and how much you have given to us. Lord, we thank you for Jesus Christ who came and died so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Yes, Lord. We thank you for that love so deep, so unfathomable, Lord. We cannot understand it. And mm -hmm. we ask you, please, Lord, that you will continue to work in our lives, mm -hmm. that others seeing us will see Jesus Christ lifted up. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't understand yet, Lord, we ask you, please, that you will give them wisdom and understanding. Mm -hmm. And help us all to use your word mm -hmm. to give you the honor and glory. Lord, bless us on this Sabbath day. Bless all who are here. Give us your peace and rest. It's my prayer in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you very much for that prayer. And we will see you all back here next week when we study our next quarter, education. Happy Thanks. Sabbath. Have a wonderful Sabbath. Thanks, guys. <laughs>